This video on atomic structure follows on from the earlier videos on atomic theory where we saw the work of John Dalton and others in the 18th and 19th century led to ideas that laid the foundation for a greater understanding of atomic structure that was to come in the early part of the 20th century. Whilst much of Dalton's ideas are still valid today, there was one idea in his postulates of atomic theory that was flawed. Dalton and his contemporaries assumed that atoms were indivisible objects and that a carbon atom, for example, was considered to be like a tiny indivisible ball akin to a tiny ball bearing. However, a series of experiments during the latter part of the 19th century and early parts of the 20th century showed that atoms are actually made up of at least three subatomic particles. Two of these, the proton and the neutron, reside within a dense core of the atom, called the nucleus, which contains most of the mass of an atom. Protons carry a net positive electrical charge, while neutrons have no net electrical charge. The third type of subatomic particle, the electron, has a relatively small mass compared with the proton and the neutron and is negatively charged. The electrons exist in the electron cloud, which is a region of space surrounding the positively charged nucleus. The electron cloud is responsible for most of the volume of an atom. The actual charge on an electron in SI units is minus 1.602 by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs, while that of a proton is plus 1.602 by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. The magnitudes of these quantities are obviously equal and only their electrical charge is different. The value 1.602 by 10 to the minus 19 coulombs is referred to as the electronic charge and is given the symbol E. Now this number is too small and inconvenient for everyday use and for this reason the charges on atomic and subatomic particles are generally expressed in multiples of this value. So as a result the charge on the electron is usually expressed as minus one and the charge on the proton is usually expressed as plus one. The charge on the neutron is zero. And since atoms have equal numbers of protons and electrons they possess no net electrical charge. So we see the overall charge of a carbon atom, for example, is zero. Now the masses of protons and neutrons are nearly equal to each other, and they are about 1800 times more massive than that of an electron. The actual mass of a proton is 1.673 by 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Again, the magnitude of these masses are very small, and to use these numbers in chemistry calculations would become very cumbersome. We therefore define another unit of mass, the atomic mass unit, when referring to masses of atomic and subatomic particles. One atomic mass unit is equivalent to 1.66054 by 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. The mass of an entire carbon atom in kilograms, including all of its protons, neutrons and electrons, is approximately 1.99 by 10 to the minus 26 kilograms, which is equivalent to 12.0107 atomic mass units and this number is the number that you will see under the symbol for carbon in the periodic table of the elements. The atomic mass expressed in atomic mass units for all other elements are also shown below their respective symbols. Now the diameter of an atom can be roughly defined as the diameter of the electron cloud and atoms typically have diameters ranging from about 50 picometers up to 500 picometers with a carbon atom having a diameter of about 77 picometers. In some textbooks you will see reference to a unit of distance for measuring atoms called the angstrom. An angstrom is equal to 1 by 10 to the minus 10 meters. So atoms therefore range in size from about 0.5 up to 5 angstroms, with the carbon atom being 0.77 angstroms in diameter. Typically the size of an atom is about 100,000 times bigger than the size of the nucleus for most atoms. So to put this into perspective, if the size of a nucleus was represented by a 5 centimeter golf ball, the diameter of an atom would be about 5 kilometers and electrons smaller than the head of a match would be buzzing around inside this volume. So clearly atoms are made up of mostly empty space, and you should know that it is virtually impossible to represent the true relative dimensions of atoms and their subatomic particles on the page of a book or even on this screen. 
Another thing worth noting, to give you an idea of the relative size and mass of these subatomic particles, is to consider that if all the space in an atom was filled with protons and neutrons, the mass of an Australian 5 cent coin would be greater than 200 million tonnes, or 2 by 10 to the 11 kilograms. And this would be equivalent to the mass of approximately 4,000 Sydney Harbour bridges. So clearly the nuclei of atoms are very, very dense compared to the density of the atom as a whole.